Is the Premier League in need of its own levelling up, but in reverse? I mean, Simon, when you look at it, when will the capital be back at the top table of the Premier League? In the past 13 seasons, only twice has there been a London-based title winner, both times from Chelsea. Yeah. Now, I mean, ironically, we come back this weekend and we've got two London clubs at the top. We've got Tottenham and Arsenal. But, I mean, is it likely to stay that way? Probably not. No, I mean, I don't worry about things like that. I mean, obviously I'm a proud Southerner, but my son was born in the North and Michelle is Northern, so I can price in a different sort of thinking about the value of the North into my into my psyche. But I don't really care about wh- who wins the title and where they where they originate from. I care about the best side and a brand of football that they're playing and that the best team wins the league. So if it happens to be a London side, great. But, you know, if the best sides are coming from the North and the North West with Manchester City, Liverpool predominantly being in that equation and at some point somewhere in the future, I suspect Manchester United, then it is what it is. I've said since the day dot, the most iconic team in the Premier League and the poster boys for the Premier League are Manchester United. Mm. So I don't sit there with some ridiculous... You know, one-dimensional mentality that needs to be a London side winning the Premier League. The best side wins the league, irrespective of where they come from. But you would concede that right now, as it stands, the North has been and is the powerhouse. But if you look at it over the thirty odd years of the Premier League, that's always been thus. They have always been the big, the most, the biggest winners. So hello, well, we, for we, we can up in the south. Well, it is what it is, isn't it? I mean, the cost implications of we just seen. The big Okay, we could then turn around and say, well, we need the spread of wealth to buy football clubs because ultimately the biggest trans- transaction currently, albeit Jim Radcliffe is just about to step in and change the dimensions of that, has been a London club being bought for, by, for two and a half billion quid. It is what it is. The, you know, the, the, the Manchesters and the Liverpools of the world are better football clubs than the London ones right now. Yeah, I don't think I don't think you need to worry about the separation of the North against. I mean, if you look at Manchester United and Liverpool since time began, and it wasn't just when the Premier League started, we're looking at nearly forty uh, championships that they've won That's between right. them. It's quite re- right. it's quite remarkable, and it's half that, isn't it? Really, between Arsenal and Chelsea. Chelsea have won five of those since Abramovich arrived. There was fifty years between their first championship and their, and their second. So yeah. obviously the dominance do you think is... It's, do you think it's cultural, Martin? Do you think that because of the way that the North is set up, because of the way football clubs are configured in the North of England, where they become an absolute pivotal part of the community, as we've seen in Newcastle, and when they arrive, they'll arrive, but they become such a fundamental... In London, with all due respect to London fans, they've got lots of other things they can do. There's ten football clubs in and around the London area, and it becomes a sort of diluted perspective where... The, the sheer passion, commitment and un- unadulterated value that's attached to the football club in the north of England, whether it's in Sheffield, whether it's in Leeds, whether it's in Manchester and whether it's even in the Midlands, seems to have a different feel. As, as a former football club owner of a London yeah, club, yeah, yeah. I, I, I felt agree with that. that. I do. I mean, one of the reasons I went to join Everton was because it's a real hotbed of football. There's a fever mm. in the city. And that's, that's something we're seeing now at Newcastle. Look at their fans in the PSG game. It was, it was remarkable. And if you get that kind of energy behind you, Jim, as well, you've got the quality of the players. It's as Manchester United, force, isn't it? Manchester United it's an irresistible had, force. As maybe their fans are from all over the place. You yeah. know, such a world uh, club now, aren't they? Everyone known throughout the world. Man City growing. Has, maybe it hasn't quite got that fever, but it, you know, people now, it's really in their minds, the football they play, the brand they play. And Arsenal created that as well. And I, The recent game, Arsenal-Man City, I was in an incredible atmosphere in the stadium. And you've got to have. But these hotbeds in the north have maybe something a little bit ex- extra special. What about tomorrow at 5.30, Chelsea taking on Arsenal? Uh, what's your thoughts going into that? Before we get your thoughts, uh, Martin, Arteta spoke just a short time ago. Now, the, much of the discussion going into this one uh, is around the goalkeeping situation, Aaron Ramsdale. Um, Ramsdale has actually been speaking about being dropped for David Raya at Arsenal. Um, Ramsdale himself said, you bothered about the predicament you find yourself in? Yes, of course. It's the first time I've found myself in this situation um, he said that he's only played one of the past seven matches at the at club level after being dropped in favour of Raya here's Mikel it's not easy for any player when he's not playing uh, as much as he would like to but um, the only way to do it is is to work harder to, to show the passion that you have for the game to contribute to the team in a different way and uh, when you get the opportunity um, do your best and try to, to help the team to win the game. So he's got to work harder, Martin. It, it, it sounds almost too obvious to say it, but I'm sure Ramsdale realises that. Yeah, and he's only answering questions. This thing's going to run and run, isn't it? It's like a pantomime. Um, I do feel um, 
sorry, concern for Ramsdale. Every time the, you know there's a goal scored or a mistake made by Raya, the camera pans to him to see what his reaction is. And we've seen this, we've talked about this already. So I think the young man just needs to keep his head down, needs to work hard and hope that it changes for him. But at the moment, it looks like you know the only time he's going to play is in the League Cup played yeah. in the last one against Brentford yeah. and he's looking forward to the next one that's really difficult for him and he can see maybe his, he feels like his career's ebbing away but things can change very quickly Jim in, in football Yeah, and if he's needed I'm pretty certain he can come in and do an outstanding job although at the moment he's second he's second place he's not the number one goalkeeper anymore and that's, that hurts how, how hard is it to fight back Martin and win your place back D- did it happen to you Cola Turi was breathing down your neck a bit was he not well, I was 37 years of age. I, in most of it, in my career, I was by, being bought to come in to take somebody else's place. I never really experienced anyone being... Maybe Sol Campbell came in uh, right at the end of my career and that was discussed with me in a, in a grown-up way with the manager that me and Tony Adams would share the place next to Sol Campbell. Although when they saw him run and do pre-season and he was after 200 yards or 100 yards behind everyone else, the gaffer <laughs> came running to us laughing to say, I might have to, I might have to change that opinion. Right. But right. by and large, we kind of did that through the season and Sol then was was quite magnificent. So it depends what stage of the career you're at. Yeah. It's probably different for a goalkeeper. There's no real way, is there, to climb clamber back into the team unless you're being picked to show that you can demonstrate that you've improved that element. And very much um, the new goalkeeper was brought in because of what he does with his feet, not necessarily what he does yeah, with course, his Yeah, of course, of course. I mean, Simon, you continually say, no, Chelsea will be all right. They'll be all right. Yeah, they Come will the be. end of the season, they they'll won't be win okay. leagues. They won't, win le- win, they won't win leagues anytime soon because two things, they're behind the opposition and I don't think their manager's got it in him to do that. But they've just won two games and on the bounce. And, and, that's great. It, and it's Arsenal coming into and town. And that's great. That's and perfect and, for them, And, and ultimately, yeah. I mean, I still pick Arsenal to win that game. I still think Arsenal are a better side and I think the occasion will play itself out and the players are big enough to play the game rather than the occasion. I think the situation with the goalkeeper is very Pep Guardiola-ish in terms of it. See, it feels like it's at the Pep Guardiola playbook in terms of it, there's no mucking about here with Arteta. Last year, there wasn't much broken about the Arsenal side. The only thing that looked at certain times was defensively, they, they looked a bit short when it came to games when um, uh, their top centre-halves were out. And they looked a bit short offensively because I don't think Enketi is good enough to give them what they need as a, as a as an alternate striker. But now he's moved on past that and gone, well, actually, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm not just going to look at those areas. The goalkeeper that's done really nothing wrong, I can enhance and that's very, very definite mm. and brutal football management. Not brutal. Do, do you like that? Do you like well, I, that in I, our I, I think it's definite. And I think in life, yeah. you know, I'd, you'd be definitely right or definitely wrong, but you would be definite. <laughs> yeah. and ideally, be definitely right. So I think this f- smells and feels like Ramsdale needs to go somewhere else if he's going to pr- if he's going to progress in his career. It doesn't c- quite have the connotations of Joe Hart, but it has a whiff of it in terms of he was uh, in and around being an England goalkeeper at the time. He was doing very little wrong even though I didn't think he was a great goalkeeper there wasn't glaring errors at Man City that would have made you think he's got to be gone and in this instance you can't expect you can expect it if you want to but you realistically can't expect a guy that has aspirations to play for the national side that's been commended and applauded for his performances last year to take it but it shows you be... doesn't it the importance that the, the manager is placing on the goalkeeper he probably sees the goalkeeper as actually the most important player well, I've always pitch, thought, which I mean... is remarkable when you see the modern day game and you see where he is yeah. Raya. But, but... and he went through a lot that Man City game was almost like keeper gate moment because the, the pressure he was Keeper under. Gates. But hasn't the, it always the, been such? I mean, the fans I, were, honestly, if you're in the stadium, the fans weren't sure. But Simon, because he's making that. mistakes. There's Gareth yeah, getting in touch. Arteta is showing massive disrespect to Ramsdale. Oh. He was part of the squad that but, pushed but, City all the way but, to the well, end. Hold on, this disrespect. He's striving for greatness. He, this, wants, this, he wants to win this, the this Premier disrespect League. disrespect because someone has a different view on you is a ridiculous you know, uh, byproduct of society. If you don't, if you say something about someone that's not particularly uh, praise uh, praise orientated, it's disrespect. It's interesting we talk about goalkeepers and their value. Martin O'Neill will sit here and tell you that the key component to them being Nottingham Forest that won the seventy eight seventy nine championship was Shorten. And it's always been such. And now it's being recognised. It's been recognised in transfer fees. It's been recognised in the value of what goalkeepers can do. And it's been made to be recognised by the fact that Guardiola's gone. I've got a goalkeeper that can play a ball yeah. better than most midfield yeah. players. I mean, Rea yeah. was actually parked, wasn't he, next to the Arsenal central defenders. He's playing so high, yeah. so this is a, a change, so they can get yeah. more personnel into the into the top of the pitch. The goalkeeper's playing really high. Now, there is a risk value to that. Right. And at the start of this game, as I say, I was just trying to explain how it was. Now, in that game, I think Rea came did full circle. By the end of the match, his kicking was absolutely outstanding, and maybe that's kind of the making of him. But it was a difficult moment for him. The fans weren't sure. Right. 
Right, okay. Well, he's got a good thing going in the goalkeeping department, many of you are saying this morning. It's great because there is serious competition for the spot. And that's what Arsenal fans want. What Arsenal fans want as well is a win at Stamford Bridge tomorrow, 5.30. And of course, earlier tomorrow, football definitely is back in the Premier League. Liverpool host Everton, 12.30. Live and exclusive on Talk Sport. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.